Okay guys, um, I thought what I might do is show you guys one of my Athens blue boxes. Um, I'm going to strip this down. It had a chip previously in it, so it, it has been wired for DCC. Stripping this down, I'm just going to do a tube and lube, if you want to call it that. Just clean up the commutator, and I'm going to improve the wheel pickups. Um, try and get it running a bit better. Now, this loco does have a sister unit with a soundtrack ch uh, chip on board, which I've done this sort of thing before. In this one, I'm just going to put a Digitrax um, sound decoder. Now, this sort of started life off as something else. I can't remember. I repainted it a few years ago and um, did a few minor modifications to make it more prototypical to a GP50. Um, yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to do this video in little fragments and I'll just squeeze it all together for one. All right, guys, to remove the trucks is pretty straightforward. It's got a little tab that you undo. Um, pull this little section out and the whole truck just drops out all right now the trucks themselves they got a little tab underneath here make sure you do one side and then do the other side it just goes in there oops there we go all right and that's what the trucks look like pull your wheel sets out and then to split the trucks, you've got a last little tab that's sitting right here. And this is, oops, this is the same on all, or most of your Athen blue boxes. So once you've got that little, that little tab out, the whole drive tower just separates beautifully like that. And she looks pretty good inside. Um, yeah, not too bad. Probably needs a bit of grease. Okay. Now, I'm not going to show you how I pull the other one apart. I'm going to do that and I'm going to pull the motor out and then we'll pick up the video from there. All right, before we move on from the trucks, I thought I'll quickly explain how this setup works. So, <clears throat> beg your pardon. You've got these little brass, brass bushes. Sorry for the lighting. You have these little brass bushes there and they, act, they catch onto this little plate. But this whole thing moves fairly freely. And that's how you have contact, no contact, contact, no contact. And that results in stalling a lot of the locomotives. Now, this one side goes up here. This thick thing, you should actually cut this out and just run a thin wire from here. Because this, this causes a resistance. And this is why your locos needs more voltage to start up when you DCC them. Um, so all these things you want to try and eliminate and get rid of. Now, what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to attempt to do on this one, is I'm going to wire in a little brush rod from there to there and there to there and that'll make constant pickup be behind the wheel on the wheel flanges and i'm hoping to get sorry and i'm hoping to get improved um pickup guys if my shots are out of focus it's it's quite difficult to do this with two hands and film and all that um, while we're on the subject i'll show you on the motor so when you dcc these athen blue boxes it's always wise to have a little bit of a strip to isolate because that section there at the bottom might actually touch on the metal frame and that's how you get shorts and blow decoders and all that. So just put a little bit of tape or sticky tape or foam or something along those lines down there so that you don't have, so that you minimize the risk of having shorts. Okay, let me show you, I don't know if the camera will focus in. So these are just little brass rods that I'm cutting and the idea will be soldering them onto the top of the frame and then just bending them out slightly and then your wheel set squeezes in behind them it's as simple as that it's just to make sure that there's contact to the plate and to the back of the wheels at all time all right um, these I picked up at my local at my local hop, hobby shop um, it's just brass rods it's my precision metals and this is the size that I'm going to use 0.45 mil so with the truck section I've moved the light a little bit guys I hope it's not gonna impact us too much all right so with with the truck section what you want to do is you're gonna solder right in the center there so use a bit of sanding paper and just clean that out so you got a good clean contact surface to solder on um, I actually I'm gonna use a Dremel and I'm just gonna shiny it up a little bit with a Dremel and just cut through the dirt a little bit um, 
and then yeah let's see if we um, can solder it I don't know how well this is going to come out in terms of um, where I'm sitting I'm just going to try and load this plate with a little bit of solder beforehand um, I almost want to say heat's not your friend in here you don't want to have heat too long on here because you're going to melt these plastic tips on the actual trucks um, these actually the tabs I mean and then you're going to be in trouble um, I think that should be enough I'm just gonna spread that out a little bit uh, one thing to mention I am using solder with a, a mixture of flux and lead um, I think it's a so 60% alloy 40% all right, and I think that should be enough. Um, right, I'm quickly going to try and load one of the brass rods on. Right, what I mean by that is just load the little brass rod or just tint it with um, a bit of solder. Right, now here comes the tricky part. Not so much for you at home, but for me doing this with two hands and the camera and just awkward angle. I'm gonna do one and then I'll do the rest off camera. Right, so you try and get this onto the center of your little solder that you've done there. Right, excuse my hands. You shouldn't be holding this little brass rod with your hands because it will warm up like no one's business. But it's really hard for me to do this with the camera in the way. All right. Okay. Right, so this is going to be the one side. Let's explain a little bit of the method to the madness here. Right, so be mindful when you do this, your trucks still need to go onto it. Right, so what I try and do, let me just get my little screwdriver here. What I try and do is when I solder this on, Try and have the brass rod flush, so that's not a great solder, I'm going to have to redo that. But try and get that as flush as you can to the metal plate, and have the brass rod itself sort of curve over this brass ring, um, and then bend it down to behind the wheel. That way you're not going to have that much resistance, and you're always going to have a, a good contact on the back of the flange of the wheel. All right, so let me fix this up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Right, so this is what we've come up with. So it sits fairly flush on that little plate. All right, now a little bit of skew angle, but don't worry about that. These things are going to be bent into place. Now, this is one of the reasons why I rather use the brass rods rather than the phosphorus um, rods that everyone recommends. Nothing wrong with the phosphorus rods. But they're very hard and very rigid. All right. Now you can either leave it like that. I'm probably not going to leave it like that. I prefer mine to be bent in a little bit and outwards a little bit, something like that. Maybe bend backwards a slightly. You don't want this to be sticking out too much because that's going to cause actual friction or actual drag on the on the locomotive. But that seems to be plenty. I think that'll be. Well, it's, it'll be a much bit better improvement on what we have already with the wheel pickups. All right, so I'm going to finish the rest of all four trucks and then we'll continue with the video. Um, the pickup wires have all been fixed to them. Pickups that I use, it's just a matter of preference, but it's actually a very hard wire. It's not a flex wire. Um, it's got its pros and its cons. The cons is it might break off um, with a lot of flexion. The pros I find is I can now bend the wire to exactly the shape I want it to follow. And that makes for a lot neater install. Putting the gears back in place. Um, you'll notice all of a sudden via magic I've got blue gloves on. It's just I don't want the oil and stuff on my hands. So we're just going to lube up the wheels, the gears. Um, one thing I didn't mention is I actually cleaned these with methylated spirits beforehand just to get the trucks nice and neat and clean for this install all right so you don't need a lot just a little bit all right and the small one goes in like so and I'll just keep that one a little bit more there come on 
Um, I'm not going to go into what grease to use and what wheels to use. I don't really know too much about that. I just buy these because you get them in an Atlas pack with all your oils, heavy oils, greases. And that's what I use, guys. Um, it's not a marketing strategy. I just, that's what I use. All right. And I'll just spin it around a little bit like that. And that should be plenty, guys. Main thing to do here is not overload with grease. Less is best in this scenario. The next section, oops, that's not the right section. So the next section goes back over here. Oh, just something to mention, because I know this will come up. I made a bit of a mistake. It's not Atlas oils that I use. It's a product by Woodland Scenics, all right? So we're not gonna close the bottom yet because the wheels still need to go back in. So I just wanna make sure that this doesn't come apart and that's what that little clip there does. Now, for all intents purposes, this is sealed. On the wheel sets, same principle applies. I've applied a little bit of grease there. I've done that off camera just to speed things up a bit. Um, a few things to mention, uh, it's worth pulling these apart and polishing the back the I don't know if you can see that there polishing the back of the wheel sets um, I didn't do it because I'm probably gonna replace the wheel sets later on down the track anyways a um, little bit of oil I've got in this cup here again with this less is best what you want to do is you want to get it right in there and a little drop right right in between the bearing and the back of the flange. Oh, that's almost too much. All right, spin that around. Make sure that your bearings are spinning because if you've got a seized bearing here, that is going to hamper the performance of your locomotive. Okay, right now, the moment of truth. Ah, oh, something else to mention. Guys, when you do this, make sure that you check your wheel gauges. Get yourself an MRA standard wheel gauge um, or just a piece of flex track, but I wouldn't recommend that because flex track flex. Um, get yourself a wheel gauge. You're spending all this time and money, you might as well do it right. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna get this right like this. All right, I'm gonna pause this and pop it in like magic. Okay. Guys, now you don't have to bend these wipers out too far. You don't have to be too aggressive with them. What I do is I just get them in there, use a little toothpick, and I just press them in. All right. Now, oh, maybe not. The nice thing about the brass wire is it's quite flexible. Oops, it's quite flexible. So you can play around with it a little bit until you get the bend that you want, all right? Except this one. Doesn't want to play the game. All right. Now it's just a matter of sitting and working it into that sweet spot. Excellent. All right. Same on this side. Beautiful. Now, this should improve the pickup, all right? Next order of business is getting the frame back onto the trucks. Uh, please forgive my um, off-camera handling as well. I'm not looking at the screen, I'm looking at what I'm doing. Sometimes I don't realize I'm actually off, out of focus. All right, so this bad boy sits somewhere along here, I imagine. Right, like I was saying earlier, a little bit of grease and just a dab of oil and spin your bearings. Make sure your bearings are nice and loose, but not. you don't want to create a gunky muck. What happens when you do too much, um, when you don't run your locos enough, all that grease just becomes one rock solid state of nasty. And if you do decide to run it, that's when you normally break gears or split towers. Or Once you've finished installing your trucks, make sure you've got decent play on them. Make sure that you've got no pinch points. Um, and also, because there's not a set standard to where we're soldering these, you might want to have to flip your trucks up 
and down like this. Move them and see if you have any possible short points.